right now on 5 on your side at 10. Tonight, his cash sucked back in by an ATM. The warning for others. And heat it. The name of one of Beyonce's latest tracks and a perfect description of her adoring fans. The St. Louis Beehive braving the heat. I'm dripping, I'm dripping. It's very hot, but I'm not gonna complain. We're blessed. And the heat is our top story tonight. It's still steamy in St. Louis. How much longer the dangerous heat lasts and the cumulative impacts of these hot days. A live look tonight at downtown St. Louis and in St. Charles. It's 10 o'clock and it is 89 degrees outside still as this region remains under an excessive heat warning. We are in a weather alert. Good evening. Thank you for being with us. I'm Ann Allred. And I'm Mike Bush. Temperatures will climb back into the hundreds tomorrow. Add in the humidity and it could feel as hot as 120 in some areas. Let's get straight over to Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell with that weather first forecast. You know, we had some pockets today where the heat index was probably close to 120 degrees. Officially in St. Louis, 114, 115 for the top heat index. Our temperatures are not cooling much tonight. We're still mostly in the 80s. Even outlying areas are still in the low to mid 80s right now. And if you've been out at all today, you know how humid and muggy it is. That is still creating a heat index in St. Louis at 10 o'clock of 103 degrees. We'll be lucky if the heat index drops below 90 degrees overnight tonight. And by tomorrow, 9 a.m., it'll already be back to 99. It'll feel like it's 112 to 115 degrees across the metro area again tomorrow with locally higher numbers in some spots. So this is a cumulative thing. You know, yesterday was the first day. Today's the second. We still have to get through Thursday, if not Friday, with this dangerous heat. The peak heat index during the afternoon hours, 110 to 120 degrees. 120 degree heat indices will likely be found close to the cornfields. And then a break is coming as we head towards the weekend. But this is some dangerous heat and it takes that effect on our body. It has that effect because it adds up over several days. Excessive heat warning continues at least through Thursday night. All right, Scott, and right now pop superstar Beyonce is performing inside the climate control dome at America's Center. But Queen Bee's fans brave the heat for hours, standing in line outside for merch and to be the first inside. Our Laura Barczewski was out there with them and joins us live outside the dome. Mike and Ann, it was very, very hot, and I'm sure she's still cranking up the heat inside the dome. But despite the heat, fans, the beehive, could not stay away from their queen bee. Hey, everybody ready? Say hey, Miss Carter! Hey, Carter! Beyonce fans were heated in more ways than one ahead of her Renaissance tour stop in STL. Heated. <laughs> Moist. In the air, but like it's fine. As you can see, I have my little upper lip is fine, but it's giving blue ivy at the Tampa show. Yeah, and I got my hot pants, you know, and I look, get the get the angle. Many people prepared for the hot and long lines with water and portable fans in hand, even at the merch trailers. We don't need anybody falling out, and I think it's important you keep you know keep hydrated. Of course, if you're having adult beverages as well as make sure you drink your water. So definitely stay hydrated, stay safe, uh, be smart while you're out here, and have a good time. Fans arrived hours ahead of time and the line kept growing. It's hot and we've been waiting. Some people have been waiting since 7 a.m. So yeah, we're ready. Mm -hmm. A little bit, about an yeah. hour or so. Just about an hour. But to these fans, the heat was nothing compared to what they hoped to experience inside those doors. Honestly, it's an experience. Like it's like a life changing experience. I yeah. Yeah, my mom said she went. It was like the whiz to her. So I'm like, I have to go experience this. So <laughs> I came, I flew out and I'm excited. It's Beyonce. She is the singer of our generation, the greatest performer walking on this planet. I saw her in Nashville and it was amazing. So I'm super excited to see it again. Beyonce really brings people together. And that's that's the thing about a Beyonce concert is it brings everybody. It's inclusive, you know. So, yes, I'm really excited. When we were out here at 5 o'clock, it was well over 90 degrees, felt like 100, and now still well over 80 degrees, meaning that it's very important that you stay hydrated, especially with those hotter temperatures ahead this week. Reporting live from downtown St. Louis, Laura Barczewski, 5 on your side. 
The St. Louis Urban League has a cool team trying to help people stay hydrated and survive the dangerous and stifling heat. And new tonight, our Robert Townsend shows us how serving our streets is more than a catchy slogan. This week, a grueling heat wave is expected to bake the St. Louis area, and that's why the Urban League's Serving Our Streets team will be on the move for a potentially life-saving mission. And we all know that this heat could be very dangerous out here, you know, um, you know, just draining you and your fluids. Driver Antonio Johnson and his co-workers will load up this van and other vehicles with hundreds of cases of cold Gatorade and bottled water right around the city and randomly pass out the free drinks to people in the triple digit heat. We connect them directly with the people. The Serving Our Streets crew will descend on neighborhoods in Baden, Hyde Park, Jeff Vanderloo, Kingsway East and West in North St. Louis. They'll be on the lookout for sweltering seniors, hot homeless folks and anyone trying to survive the oppressive heat. If they see someone out and about and, and uh, you know, the heat is stifling and we see children, they're going to stop and address those needs. This comes from my food pantry. Pastor Alfred Ganey's Lily of the Valley Missionary Baptist Church donated 20 cases of Gatorade toward the project. It's, it's all about helping one another. And anything that my church in Lily of the Valley can do, we're all for it. The seven man crew will officially hit the streets on Tuesday morning. They will ride around all day long, keeping people cool. Dedicated Urban League employees serving their community for several years now, even on those hot, hazy days of summer. We want to see everybody up moving just to help out this community. Robert Townsend, five on your side. The Serving Our Streets team tell us they've served more than 5,000 people during a similar heat wave last summer. For more information on cooling centers and how to stay safe in these dangerous temperatures, just text the word HEAT to 314-425-5355 and we'll send some links to your phone. Tonight, St. Louis police are investigating after a woman was stabbed to death just blocks away from the Del Mar Loop. It happened this afternoon at the Gas Mart at Del Mar and Goodfellow. Police do have a suspect in custody. Tonight, a former first grade teacher in Illinois faces federal charges. He tried to solicit child sexual abuse material from a 13 year old girl. Federal prosecutors say 25 year old Jonathan Vilmer of New Baden sent sexually explicit messages to the girl and requested photos on Snapchat. Investigators say they also found messages to other minors. Vilmer taught at New Baden Elementary and coached girls sports for the district. Developing tonight, former President Donald Trump announced on social media just a few hours ago he will surrender to authorities in Georgia on Thursday. He will be booked at the Fulton County Jail in Atlanta. That's where he and 18 others face racketeering charges over allegations they tried to overturn the 2020 election. The announcement comes just hours after a judge set the former president's bond at $200,000. Well, when you withdraw cash out of an ATM and the money comes out, sometimes you need to act fast, very fast. That is the warning from a South St. Louis man. He tells the I-team his ATM took back the money he withdrew. Now he can't get a refund. Super investiga senior investigative reporter Paula Vassan digs into what you need to know to make sure you don't lose your money. Look at the neighborhood. I mean, for crying out loud, we're not in Creve Corps. We're not in Ledoux here. We live on paycheck to paycheck around here for the most part. Outside a convenience store in South St. Louis, Jim Hinkle says he's been swindled by what's inside. It's just one more example of the rich taking advantage of the poor. It started with this ATM. It's where he came a few months ago as a favor for a neighbor. Who is uh, handicapped, he's homebound, and uh, he does his banking through an ATM and uh, he wanted cash out. Henkel had to withdraw $800, but could only take out $200 at a time. He was not quick enough. So while I'm turning the money around and counting it, the other 200 were sitting in the, in the slot, and all of a sudden, the money was gone. Gone back into the machine, he says, with no warning. But his receipt showed he got the money when his neighbor's bank account shows the opposite. And without a paper trail, he says he has no proof. It's his word against the ATM company. They should at least notify you that you didn't get your money. But instead, it just says, yes, you got the money and everything's fine, which spells thievery to me. So we put the ATM to the test with a timer. 
Exactly how long does it take for money that comes out of the slot to get sucked back in? With our cameras rolling, Henkel withdrew $20, then waited to see how long it would take to go back inside. We clocked 30 seconds. What do you want people watching this right now to know? Grab your money. Don't worry about counting it. Count it after you get your money. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau has this advice. If you're missing money from your ATM, contact your bank or credit union right away. But Hinkle says that's been difficult. He and his neighbor have been told it's the ATM company's responsibility to refund the money. We reached out to the owner of the ATM for answers, a spokesperson with NCR Corporation, which oversees all point ATMs nationwide, declined to comment. It sounds like you've just been through so many hurdles. It's discouraging on all levels. We contacted the ATM Industry Association. A spokesperson tells us that when cash is dispensed and then goes back inside the machine, it's for security. They also say it's likely the responsibility of the ATM operator to give back the cash or issue a credit back to the customer. For the I-Team, Paula Vassan, five on your side. Has this happened to you? Our I-Team wants to hear from you. You can leave a voice message by calling 314-444-5231 or email Paula, tips at KSK.com. All calls and correspondence will be kept confidential. New tonight, a man sent to prison as a teen and then became an author while behind bars, is out with a new memoir. Tonight, Bobby Bostick discussed his new book, Humble to the Dust, Still I Rise, at the Florissant Valley branch of the St. Louis County Library. He was released on parole back in November after spending more than 27 years in prison for an armed robbery he committed at the age of 16. But just to be outside and to be free is a beautiful thing, so I'm not trying to play catch up from the past. I'm just enjoying every day of life as it is now. This is Bostick's eighth book. He's also started a nonprofit helping St. Louis youth. These viral images are not fake, but what about the claims lasers sparked the Hawaii wildfires? We verify. A warning tonight about a back to school tradition. You never know who is going to be able to see and access that photo. A lesson from police on oversharing with those first day pictures. Even the bus ride to school is steamy again tomorrow morning. The change is coming for the weekend that should bring us some relief. Tonight, the cleanup has begun in Southern California in the wake of Tropical Storm Hillary, but officials are warning of more severe flooding and mudslides. The first tropical storm to hit the region in 84 years dumped several inches of rain, and a 5.1 magnitude earthquake also hit north of Los Angeles during the height of the storm. Within the hour, President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden departed Hawaii. Earlier tonight, they toured the fire-ravaged island of Maui and met with devastated families. The visit comes as critics and some residents express anger over the government's response to the wildfires that killed more than 100 people and destroyed parts of the island. And more than 800 people are still missing as recovery crews search the rubble. The president pledged federal support. The country grieves with you, stands with you, and will do everything possible to help you recover rebuild and respect culture and traditions. The White House said today a new federal response coordinator will help make sure all federal agencies are bringing the right resources to help the community rebuild and recover. Tonight, viral images claim to reveal what caused the Maui wildfires. Our Verify team found even though they may look fake, these are in fact real photos. But Adian Daytil explains why those don't legitimize the claims. The wildfires that swept through Maui are the deadliest in U.S. history in more than a century. At least 100 people have died and more than 850 are missing. On social media, people are speculating about what could have caused the fires. One trending theory is that the fire started due to an attack from a directed energy weapon. Three viral images appearing to show evidence of directed energy weapons have been shared online. But do these images really show that directed energy weapons started the wildfires in Maui? Let's verify. Our sources are the U.S. Government Accountability Office, the National Weather Service, a reverse image search using Revi, the Canton Repository, SpaceX, and Chile Vision Noticias, a Chilean news company. If you haven't heard of directed energy weapons, I've got you covered. They're weapons like lasers that use energy fired at the speed of light to damage or destroy targets. 
According to the U.S. Government Accountability Office, many countries, including the U.S., are researching their use. But these viral images do not show those weapons. As of August 21st, the exact cause of the Maui wildfire is still unknown, although the National Weather Service says the risk of fire was high given high winds and dry conditions on the island. So what is actually happening in these images? A lot of different things that have nothing to do with Maui. Using a reverse image search, Verify traced this picture back to a January 2018 Facebook post from the Canton Repository, a local Ohio news outlet claiming to show footage of a controlled burn at a refinery in Ohio. We traced this image back to posts from SpaceX in May of 2018. According to SpaceX, the images show a time-lapse photo of a SpaceX rocket launch in California. And finally, Verify traced this image back to a viral TikTok video from May 25th, 2023. According to the original description, the video was taken in Chile. A Chilean news outlet shared the footage saying it shows a transformer explosion. So we can verify, no. These three images do not show evidence that directed energy weapons started the wildfires in Maui. All three are older images taken from other parts of the world, and none of them show directed energy weapons. With your Verify, I'm Ariande Till. What can we verify for you? Send an email. The email address is verify at kstk.com. As many Missouri students head back to class this week, a warning tonight for parents about posting those back to school pictures online. Police say oftentimes those photos taken on your front porch or driveway, they just give too much information to the bad guys. They say it's okay to still post pictures, but parents should be a little more aware of what they're sharing. Even if you have your privacy settings really locked down so that you only know who's seeing it, it's still the internet. Keep the details minimal, if any at all. Take a picture of your kiddo in front of a brick wall or in front of a tree. If your child poses with a sign, make sure it doesn't include their last name, their age, grade, or their teacher's name. All right, let's get back to Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell with that weather first forecast. It's going to be dangerous out there tomorrow, Scott. It is, and it still is tonight, really, if you think about it, because we don't get a chance to cool off very much. And, you know, we started the morning with a lot of clouds and fog. This is what it looked like about an hour and a half ago in Ellisville. Jessica shared this photo with us from the Five on Your Side Weather Watchers Facebook group, and you can see the clouds already back in there. So tomorrow morning, we may have some more low clouds, some more fog. Any cloud cover that hangs around for any amount of time trims the amount of heat we end up getting. But the bottom line is it's still warm. These are pretty close to our average highs right now in the mid 80s around St. Louis. And we're talking heat index values that are running well above 90 degrees. And in some cases, especially in the core of the urban area, we're looking at the heat index running about 100 or a little better. Cahokia Heights at 104 at Forest Park, 100. Go to Berkeley, 104. Washington, Missouri is probably skewing a little high, as is Afton here, based on the fact that the sensors for dew points are likely to be problematic there. The excessive heat warning remains in effect for the entire area as we head through Thursday evening, maybe into Friday. We'll see. 88 degrees right now. Feels like it's 103. Our high today, because we had the clouds this morning and they stuck around into early this afternoon, just 95 degrees. That could happen for some of us again tomorrow. The question remains, how much sun do we see? That'll determine whether we get to 100 or not. But it doesn't make any difference because either way, we're still looking at the heat index above 115 for some of us. Overnight lows in the 70s to around 80 degrees. They're not all that cool. The moisture out west, you've seen all the stories about Hillary. That moisture streaming into the northern Rockies, up into Canada with that tropical system. The Atlantic's now getting active. That's Franklin. That's down south of Puerto Rico. And this is tropical cyclone number nine. It will be Harold heading into tomorrow at some point as a tropical storm. For us, it's basically the big bubble of high pressure aloft, just squashing any chance for rain here. Dangerous heat continuing for the next few days. 100 or so for the high Tuesday, 101 Wednesday, 103 on Thursday may challenge some records. Your heat index, this is really where the focus is for the next few days. Talking about 105 to 120 degrees for your afternoon heat index values, not only for Tuesday, but Wednesday, Thursday, even into Friday, you're looking at some numbers that aren't very good there. So we have weather alert days running through Friday. 
We will drop the humidity levels here as we head into the weekend and temperatures will back off as well. There is no rain right now in the next 10 days that we can see. We'll wait and see on that. All right, Scott, thank you. Frank, what's coming up? There is absolutely nothing interesting about the Cardinals and Pirates, but the Bob Costas hit and run segment tonight is plenty interesting. Plus more on that juggernaut known as City SC. And a reminder, this year's show of strength, MDA Telethon, is a week early this year. And Scott Rennie will join me at Grant's Farm this Sunday night. We'll be live on 5 on your side from 8 until 10 and on KSTK.com and the 5 Plus streaming app. And all the money raised during our telethon goes to people with neuromuscular diseases right here in the St. Louis area. The Sports Desk is sponsored by Jim Butler Chevrolet, the Midwest's number one Chevy dealer, 10 years running. Every once in a while, when the Cardinals win a game, you think, boy, they have some talent. Add some pitchers, and they'll be just fine next season. Then you have a game like tonight in Pittsburgh, and you think there are 30 teams in baseball, and the Cardinals are 26th. This may not be a quick fix after all. Drew Rahm, acquired in the Jack Flaherty trade, made his major league debut, and it didn't go well. Joshua Palacios gets all of this. It's a three-run homer. The Pirates led it eight to nothing in the fourth inning. Cardinals had just five hits. Here's one of them, Andrew Kisner. You know, he had seven combined homers in his first four years. He's got 10 now. Anyway, Pirates win 11 to one. This Five on Your Side St. Louis City SC coverage is sponsored by Together Credit Union. Defender Tim Parker got things going for City SC last night against Austin FC with the header off the set piece. You'll remember it was Parker who scored the franchise's first goal back in February against Austin. He was the picture of exhaustion when it was all over. A game the team dedicated to him for the upcoming birth of a son later this week. Uh, yeah, I mean, he has some things going on in the next couple of days, and I'm sure, you know, it's very exciting news, and he'll let you know all about it. But, um, yeah, uh, this was this was probably for Tim. You know, I said to him before the game, this is for you. So I'm glad he got his goal, and yeah. We often play hit and run with a sports celebrity, and they don't come any bigger than Bob Costas, who has 29 Emmys on his shelf. With the help of editor Bill Bennett, we give you our No Hedging segment. You are a network executive. Yes. You choose one broadcaster to broadcast one NBA game. Nationally. Yes. Marv Albert. One NFL game. Boy, it's tough because Summerall was great and Joe Buck is great, but I would go with Al Michaels. And one Major League Baseball game. Vince Scully. One baseball player to get one hit to save the world from communism. <laughs> Who would it be? I would say either Ted Williams or Tony Gwynn. Or Stan Musial. Scott Rowland or Nolan Arnato, you get one for 10 years. Oh, wow. I, I, I'd have to, to be honest, I'd go with Nolan Arenado. But Scott Rowland's in the Hall of Fame, so he must have been very great. You're in charge of the Hall of Fame now. Would you vote the steroid guys in? If in my mind the person already had Hall of Fame credentials unaided by PED, that would be Barry Bonds who was never nearly as great as he became with steroids, but he was Hall of Fame great prior to 1998-99. Easy first ballot Hall of Fame. So was Roger Clemens. Word association, first word that pops into your head, Tony La Russa. Brilliant and driven. Whitey Herzog. Also brilliant, but rollicking good fun. Jack Buck. Beyond great. He, it's one thing to be excellent at a craft, another to have some kind of combination of human elements that connect with an audience. And as great as Jack was on network TV and radio, to really appreciate him, you had to hear him locally night in, night out on the card. Joe Buck. One of the best network play-by-play -play men ever. Final thought, what athlete would you like to have been for one day and have his skill set? You could say Willie Mays, you could say Hank Aaron, you could say Babe Ruth, you could say Stan Musial, you could say Mickey Mantle. As great as all of them are, None of them were sh doing what Shohei Otani did. So only one person knows what it's like to be that. Yeah. Pretty good. 
Yeah. <laughs> really? I, I could, you could do a hit and run with him every Monday, and I would love it. He is just I think so everybody great. would. What yeah. athlete would you want to be, though? I think I'd take Larry Bird for a day. Yeah, you love Larry Bird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, you were probably as good as Larry Bird at UMSL. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what they say at UMSL. <laughs> they do. <laughs> yeah. Coming sure. up, a dangerous encounter for a delivery driver, how he didn't let it rattle him. Tonight, a delivery man in Nebraska is being called a hero. A home's doorbell camera captured the moment he encountered a rattlesnake while dropping off a package on the front porch. Look at how big that thing is. Well, he wasn't rattled. He grabbed the shovel and took care of it. The driver left a note reading, I hope you didn't have a pet rattlesnake because I killed him. Sorry about the blood. The homeowner was grateful. I'll bet. Well, smart, their little kid could have stepped on it. There you have it. Five on your side at 10. See you tomorrow.